Hey everyone, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. Before I introduce today's guest, I want to thank Michelle Schwegman from Herbivore Clothing in Portland for this wonderful shirt. She was recently on the show making only kale can save us now salad. They have wonderful ethical vegan products. So my guest today, as often happens, was referred by a previous guest. If you watch my show regularly, you know that I had Tabay Atkins on. He is the youngest certified yoga teacher in the world with multiple certifications, now even teaching yoga specifically for people with cancer. And his mom popped in and we found out that she also is a yoga teacher and a cancer survivor. So we have her back on the show. Her son may pop in, we hope. And she's going to be doing a food demo of a wonderful Persian recipe. She's Persian and she makes Persian rice, which I love because if you know my friend Shada, she makes Tadig and she makes it without oil. And she's going to tell us her story on how she overcame cancer. Please welcome to the show, Sahel Anvenerjad. I hope I got that right. I've been practicing all day. <laughs> it's so nice to see you guys again. Nice to see you too. Thanks for having me. Oh my God, that apron just, I love that apron. <laughs> We've got one for you, so we'll bring it over. Yeah. That, is, that, is the, that, is just, that is the coolest thing. And you drew that, right? Yes. You, you, you know, for people that don't believe in reincarnation, they haven't met you because you really are what people say an old soul to be, to be that young and to have that many gifts and talents. Uh, you're not even 16 yet. And you've done more in 15 years than many of us have done in our entire lives. So you're just, you really are such an inspiration to me. Thank you so much. Thank you. Yeah, he's got, we're going to switch the aprons right now. I mean, how do you have such a, he's such a kind person. He really is. I'm very lucky. He's very helpful. He's got a beautiful heart. He's always been like this, um, you know, always kind to everybody. He was always, when he was at school, um, I, I, I think he told you last time he's already graduated from high school last year at age 14. But when he was in school, if there was someone that was, you know, didn't have someone to play with, he was the first one to go and, um, and introduce himself and just bring them into the group to play to make them feel comfortable. He's really, really very good boy, um, old soul, and I'm lucky he's mine. <laughs> oh my God, he, remarkable. I mean, just, I just, the, he, he would just exude kindness from every poor. <laughs> yeah, so cool. Cause some kids are not as <laughs> kind as you, as you probably know. So you, I just love that you're, cause I say on the show, people are doing great things in the world and, and there's so many people. And that's what I want to shine the spotlight on people in all different areas, all different ages, walks of life. And to make it even better, you're both vegan. Yeah. yeah. And it's great because he's inspired so many people, young and old, his age, adults. And, you know, you just, people feed off that good energy. And it's, it's really nice to be able to have this platform to share the importance of yoga and veganism. Yeah. One of the things I love about your story, and, and, and this is like a recurring theme in the show and in life, is that sometimes the absolute worst thing that happens to us in the moment, it's horrible. But then when we look back, it's like, that was the greatest thing, because if that hadn't happened, this would have happened. And I think in a way, as, as, as horrible as cancer is, many people are dealing with it. For you, it was a gift in a way, right? It was. It, it opened up a whole new world to us. It did. Yeah. I mean, you know, people say, I'm so sorry you went through that. And it was awful. Of course, it was awful. Nobody wants to go through that. But, you know, that happening brought all of, of this into our lives, the yoga, the veganism, it, we wouldn't have it had allowed us to do such good for the planet and the people. Yeah, and now we're able to take that bad that happened and, um, you know. Look at the bright side. Yeah. Because every, uh, every situation has a positive and a negative, and you have to choose which one you're going to focus on. Exactly. And you that focus is... on the good, and, you know, I'm just thankful every day that I'm here. I'm alive. I made it. I'm healthier than I have ever been, even before cancer, and we are thriving, um, you know, having a whole foods plant-based uh, diet and just living a really good life and trying to share and inspire everyone that we can to get them to understand that, hey, like, take it from me, I was in the worst situation physically, and I'm in the best now. It's always easy to, it's always best, I feel like the best example is someone who's gone through something to share, to share, not, you know, I, I wasn't always vegan. I wasn't always as healthy. So having that experience, I think it resonates with a lot of people. And how long have you been cancer free now? And maybe talk about what kind of cancer you had and how you found out about it. Yeah. So I, um, uh, 
Uh, it's September 14th. I will be nine years cancer free. <laughs> and uh, I was uh, misdiagnosed for almost a year. So I had, I was 31 years old, uh, almost 32. And I kept getting, I was very, I was sick. I had like cold like symptoms. I had, you know, a little cough here, you know, sore throat, backache, just tired. And I never, I never went to the doctor. I mean, unless it was really bad. I didn't take pills. I didn't take NyQuil. I was like, I'll have some, you know, tea with lemon and ginger and I'll feel better. But I wasn't getting better. And I just, I, my parents came to visit us and it was like a month almost, I think, that I was having these symptoms. And my dad's like, how are you not getting better? You need to go to the doctor. So we found a doctor, we went to a doctor and um, he said, you have a cold. And I said, okay, all this time. And then uh, it, it got a little bit worse. He said, you have bronchitis. So they gave me some, uh, something for that. And then they said, you have an ear infection. So this is, by, by the way, this is in eight months time. They're, I keep on going in because I'm not getting better. Then he said, I had ear infection, I had bronchitis. I had um, everything you can think of. But whatever they were giving me, if, if I did take uh, pills, if I did take any antibiotics, you know, if it's for seven days or 10 days, I would take the full thing and I would be better. But I was taking it and I was not getting better. And I just got weaker and weaker, but it wasn't anything serious that I was like, what is wrong with me? I just couldn't shake this cold off that I thought I had. And so I Googled my symptoms and it showed uh, six out of eight symptoms of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma cancer, which I had never heard of before. I didn't really understand cancer at all at that time. But uh, so I went to the doctor and I said, listen, I printed this up. I said, it shows that I have six out of eight symptoms of this. Just do a blood, blood work or just do something, just to check, just to eliminate this. And he looked at me and he laughed and he said, you're young, you're healthy, get out of here. You don't have cancer. You know, I, I never smoked in my life. You know, I've never done drugs. I ate pretty good. So what I thought, you know, I exercise regularly. I looked physically very healthy. And so he just took that and said, and you know, made me feel like I became like a hypochondriac or something. I, I really thought, what was I even thinking? I was embarrassed that I even mentioned it. So then um, fast forward again, in three weeks, I lost 19 pounds. I went down to 100 pounds in three weeks. And I, I kept feeling like there was something here. It didn't hurt, but I just felt something and it just, it was weird, a weird feeling. And I complained about it. He said, yeah, I said, he said, what is the feeling? I said, I feel like there's something blocking me, like it, like blocking uh, from me swallowing. It doesn't hurt, but he said, oh, it's just a thyroid issue. That's nothing that's very common. And then it got a little bit bigger, notice, more noticeable, especially when I was losing that much weight. And I, and I was having a lot of night sweats and no energy, backache. And I thought, well, I, I, I mean, I always pushed myself through a workout and I felt better, but I, this wasn't happening. And I never sweat before. So having these night sweats really, to me, that was the biggest uh, scare for me because it was something very new to me that I'd never experienced. And still, he just said it's a thyroid issue. It, all those symptoms, it's very normal with thyroid issues. Um, you'll be fine. So then he wanted to give me something for anxiety. And I said, I'm not taking this. I don't have anxiety. I know my body. I know what I'm feeling. And, uh, but he, again, just made me feel like I was, I need to question myself. So my parents came to visit. It was my mom's birthday, April 20th, 2012. We were about to cut her cake. Oh, before that, she said, my daughter, there is something wrong. So she took me and she said, you're going to check my daughter. This is not thyroid issue. This is not a cold. Um, there is something seriously wrong with my daughter. So they did another x-ray, they did another test, they sent me to go get an ultrasound, called me within the hour as we were cutting the cake and said, I'm sorry, you're right, you have cancer. I have chills right now just even saying this, and I've said it many times, I didn't understand. And uh, Tabe was in first grade at the time, he was six years old, and I just remember saying, well, what do I do now? And, and the guy said, who misdiagnosed me all this time, said, oh, we'll just wait till next week sometime an oncologist will get a hold of you. Well, I didn't even know, I didn't even know what a dermatologist was, let alone an oncologist. Like I had no idea these words were just words to me. And so I hung up 
And my mom and my, my dad, they were freaking out. And I was like, you guys, it's okay. We'll just wait till next week. She's like, are you kidding me? She's like, so we called them back and they said he had already left. It was Friday. He wanted to leave early. And so my mom was very upset. Her, she called her brother-in-law who was a doctor. They came and picked me up and said, you're going to the emergency room. And I didn't understand. So I kept thinking, well, the doctors know best. It's okay. Let's not stress out. So they wheeled me in. They did the first of many biopsies and they said, had you not come in tonight, you would not have made it till the morning. The size of the tumors are now the size of softballs. So I had a cap. I, I got, it was at to a point where I was trying to lick a cap full of water and I would choke. I was choking just for my saliva because I, I just couldn't. It was getting bigger by the hour now. Like by the, it, it, it had gotten that bad. So thank goodness my parents were there and they got me to the emergency room. They started intense chemotherapy on me, which just completely broke me down. And I, you know, I couldn't walk and needed a wheelchair. And then, you know, blood transfusion. I had a blood clot. I got staph. I had so many things as if cancer wasn't enough in the process of going through uh, this journey with having had chemotherapy. I just didn't understand so. And then I started to lose my hair. And I used to have very long, thick, curly hair down below my butt, um, fuller than today's hair. But then when it started to when it started to go, I, it made me feel really nervous and just weird. And so my friend came to the hospital, and then she shaved the rest of it, so it wouldn't just be in you know like batches the way it was coming out. And um, and then I started with my eyelashes, my eyebrows. I was very weak, very sick, and. Um, I moved, I went back to Orange County and luckily went, uh, got transferred to Cedar sinai Hospital. I love, love, love my new oncologist. He saved me because where I was before, they did, um, I had three chemotherapy sessions and then uh, I was scheduled for the fourth one had I not been accepted to Cedar sinai Well, they did the first PET CT scan, which again, I did not know any of this. I didn't know what this was. Whatever they said is happening, I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Okay, I, I'm so out of it. They were drugging me up so bad. They did an emergency surgery. They put a porta cap in my, uh, my chest for the chemo in the other hospital. And they put it in the wrong place. So the whole time I was getting chemo in my liver. And so my new oncologist, they had to cut it, remove it, lift it up, put it in the right place and then do all these tests to make sure that that was going to not kill me. And thank goodness, you know, earlier the doctor laughed at me and said, what a waste, you were so healthy. And my new oncologist said, it was because I was so healthy that I was able to survive what they messed up and to get through that big mistake. And he didn't even know how I had made it through three chemos, putting it in the wrong, uh, in the wrong place. So um, that was another thing, and uh, I had a 30% survival rate because it was Hodgkin's lymphoma and non-Hodgkin's, and I had was it large, uh, B, large B cell, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, which is, you have a 30% survival rate. And then add me being misdiagnosed for forever. But I, I made it, I, I got through it, and September 14th, which was just six days before my birthday, I, um, you know, my oncologist said that I was cancer free and I didn't have to do chemo anymore. And um, I'm very thankful that I, you know, I, I, I got through all those different things that I went through with cancer. That's amazing. Do you, are you in touch with any of your doctors? Oh yeah, the nurses and my oncologist, my oncologist, we text all the time. So I still go in annually. Well, I have it this last year because of COVID. But he, um, if I have a problem, I message him and he messages me back right away. Every month on the 14th, I send him a text and I say, you know, I'm eight, if, I, if I was eight, eight years and eight months or whatever it is, I, uh, I send him a picture of me in today, like an updated picture. And um, yeah, I'm, I'm friends with all of them. They've all been very, they've seen Tobey grow up to be what he's become, you know, and it's a very close, uh, we've got a good close relationship, friendship, and, you know, he really saved me and he was there for me. And um, I'm, I'm just, I'm very, very thankful to be alive and to have made that transition to that hospital because I was afraid. I was afraid to move out of one hospital to another one because I was like, well, what if I die on my way there? Because it's a long drive. Yeah. 
we were in Clovis and I was at the Fresno hospital. That's where they misdiagnosed me. And so for me thinking of a three or four hour drive with a lot of the, you know, the drive being, um, through the mountain. yeah, through the mountain, I was just afraid because I couldn't breathe without oxygen. I just, it was, it was very, uh, I was just fearful and, um, and I was crying all the time. You know, I was like, I don't want to die. You know, I don't want to lose to Faye and he needs me. And, and it was hard being a single mom going through this. I mean, just going through this anyways, but you know, we were so close and he was, and you know, he couldn't be around me at the hospital much. Maybe a few times he could come and see me, but because of the germs that kids had and how, how bad of the shape I was in, they couldn't let, I mean, I couldn't have flowers around me. I couldn't have anything. And so when he would come there, you know, I just put on the smile and, uh, and then we had little books that said, oh, how my, my mommy has cancer or my mommy lost her hair, just stuff because it was a big change. And uh, he would come in and take the oxygen out from my nose and for a second I couldn't breathe. I'm like, okay, let's put that back in, honey. <laughs> you know, he didn't really understand. And we tried, we had all the family around him and friends to keep him busy and, um, to not really be affected, but I never cried around him. I just would, you know, cry to myself or my parents. I was, I was afraid. I was really, really afraid. And people kept saying, "Oh, you're fine." I was like, "This is not a cold. This is cancer. I'm in bad shape." But my, um, but I'm here. I'm here, and I'm here to share and to let people know. People ask me, "Well, why didn't you get a second opinion or a third opinion?" At that time, I didn't know. Because I thought, well, I didn't go to school to be a doctor, so why would I ever think to question a doctor? Now I will. If I'm not feeling right, I mean, luckily I have an amazing oncologist, but if I'm not feeling right, I will ask two, three different people, if, if that's ever the case now. But if you know there's something wrong with your body, it's not normal, question it, you know, because I mean, just find out what's going on and hopefully you fix it. Because had I been diagnosed early on, I wouldn't have had, I could have had both. Yeah, like my, my dad had cancer. They caught it so soon that they just had surgery, removed it. But um, with me, had they, had they listened to me eight months prior, it would have been a surgery removed and that's it. I wouldn't have had to have the you know chemo that I had and, um, and everything else that I experienced. But I did and I am, and it was something that I needed to go through obviously in my life to shake me up a little bit more and make me even more grateful for life and everything that life has brought to us. That's wonderful. Did, do people that have this diagnosis now ever find you and contact you? All the time, not even just this one, every kind of cancer, breast cancer. There's so many cancers that I never even knew about. Um, to be a mess, it is, he gets messages all the time saying, I saw this, you know, and we, he connects them to me. Um, they'll find me through his page and we, or on his website, they'll send me a message and we try to get back to everyone. I mean, there's thousands of people that have been affected or they have a parent or a sibling or a, a cousin, a family member, and they just want us to talk and like, we just want them to see your energy and they, how you overcame what you overcame because it wasn't always so easy. Like, oh, I had cancer and you know, I went through it. It was awful. And I went through so much during it. So being able to help other people uh, is really nice. All the wonderful modalities you teach now, like whole food, plant-based cooking and yoga, you weren't actually doing them during your cancer treatment, right? These came afterwards. So you survived it doing, you did traditional medicine and everything like that, but then you learned these wonderful tools that I think contributed to you being cancer-free all these, this time. Absolutely. So no, we weren't even vegan at that time. I mean, we thought we were healthy because we ate organic. No, we didn't even do that. Not until after cancer. Yeah, after after can cancer. Right after cancer, we said, we need to be healthy now. Let's only eat organic. Yeah. And, and that was our big change yeah. uh, to, to health. And, and we never ate red meat or pork just because we didn't like it. I mean, I never liked it. I only ate it because my parents made me when I was a kid. But as soon as I was 16 and I was able to order meals myself, I was like, well, I don't like this, so I'm not going to order it. And I don't have to have it. Same with soda. 16 years old, I just stopped. It was put in front of me, and so I drank it. But... He's never even tasted soda. I haven't had it since I was 16. He's never had it. You know, just not missing out on anything. You know, water is great. Juice is great. And, um, but, uh, you know, we ate chicken and fish and we thought we were so healthy because we ate that. 
And, and not only that, we organic. Yeah, and we're like, look, it's all, all organic. And, you know, we just didn't understand. We didn't know. And, the, and then we started, we watched, uh, well, it, first it was yoga. And then after, it, and I feel like that also brought this into, in, into our life because yoga and veganism, they go together. And, um, but first, my first big thing after um, having had cancer was um, finding yoga because I'd never done that before. But then after a few years, Tabe and I watched the documentary, What the Health? And that's that very morning we said we're done. It was in 2017, so not too August 31st. Ago. August 31st. That's our vegan birthday. Yeah, and we. Uh, that's funny. Mine is September 1st. Oh my oh. gosh! Wow. Yeah. No, mine was August 31st. Hers is September 1st. No. We can celebrate because I can't. I'm, I'm I'm gonna be 44 years this year. So. Oh we can. my gosh! Awesome. Wow. Yeah. That's, that's crazy. Yeah, so I just, we said, okay, we're, we're going to transition, this is it. But still, all the, the years from 2017 when we began till now, we've grown a lot, we've evolved so much because at first it was fast food vegan, you know, we were having processed food, but still it was better than, you know, having, having a, you know, non-vegan food. But at first we did it because we thought we were doing it for our health. I watched that documentary and what I got out of it was, I don't want to get cancer again. So whether it's true or not, I'm making this change. And it's true. <laughs> and it's true. And so then I um, I don't know. It was so, it was, you know, I always used to buy name brand handbags, shoes. They're all leather. And I didn't think about it because at that moment I still did. But then a couple months later, we went to Hawaii. This is before we moved there. And we were shopping and I went into, um, I went to Louis Vuitton and I bought Tabay and his manager friendship bracelets, leather bracelets. And I walked out of the store and all of a sudden, it was the weirdest thing. I walked out and I stopped and he looked at me, he's like, are you okay? And I said, oh, what did I just do? And I just then connected the dots. I said, how am I, how am I buying leather and telling all of our family, you need to be vegan when I'm still, I'm, I'm still just as bad as them, just because I'm not putting on my plate. I'm putting it in our body. So I walked right back into the store. I returned those. And I said, I'm never, ever doing that again. But I didn't put it together. I didn't connect that at the beginning. But there's so much. It's just not our bodies. It's the planet. It's the animal. So it started off with one for one reason. And then it became for everything. And, and I just, you know, we just became more aware and more mindful. And I feel like having this, it just, it just made it so much better. And, um, and then we started taking processed food out. We realized like, why are we eating processed food? And, you know, we are great cooks. We make all these different things. We don't need to eat outside. And then we went from that to then last year, and actually exactly a year ago, we cut out oil from our food and most salt. We barely put any salt and no sugar, sugar, salt, and, um, and because, you know, we just were programmed, like, you have to have this. You can't have dessert without sugar. You can't have the tasting good without oil. Persian food, are you kidding me? You know, tatty. My mom was like, good luck. You'll never have tatty again. And um, we started just doing this, and we have been more happy and fulfilled um, with having an oil, sugar-free um, diet for the last year than and it's tasted so much better. You get the same crunch into the food, you get the crispiness without that grease and without that, you know, gross feeling that you get after eating afterwards. Same taste, if not better. So that has been our evolvement into now. That is fantastic. So the yoga you teach now for people that have cancer, how's that different from just regular yoga? I thought it was the same because when I learned it, I had just had cancer and I was very weak. Of course, you modify everything, but there is a big difference with the, the poses because Tibet will know this more because he practices it a lot. He has a lot of classes that he teaches. Um, but the movements, you're, you're, do you want to explain this part of it? Because uh, a lot of times people, when they're teaching cancer patients or survivors, they do very light restorative yoga. Yeah, um, modifying poses. And, yeah, just using the props, but 
cancer patients and survivors, they want to move too. They don't want to just be doing resting poses, not all the time. So yoga for cancer is where you are still moving, but you're not doing as intense as a, like a power vinyasa class. You're using some props to uh, help you come into the poses with more uh, ease, but still using your body to do the poses. And uh, it's just, the whole practice is modified specifically to fit a cancer patient or a cancer survivor. Yeah, but that's interesting. Cancer patient, you know, I, I have this voice in my head. It was so funny. Well, it wasn't funny. It was kind of embarrassing. I was hosting a summit on, on weight loss and uh, interviewing an obesity doctor. And I was asking something like, well, um, are obese patients more likely? He goes, stop. And I'm like, he goes, don't call them obese patients. Call them patients that have obesity. Oh, wow. yeah. rather than define them as their diagnosis. So I'm wondering if maybe with cancer patients, we should say, you know, patients that are, ex people that are experiencing cancer, because when you call them a cancer patient, that makes up their identity. Yes. Right, yeah. Like uh, with, what is it? Uh, uh, I teach yoga, uh, I'm certified in yoga for uh, children on the autism spectrum. I've learned uh, not to call them, uh, uh, autistic. autistic kids because that kind of you're labeling la them. that's a label and it's not good to label people it doesn't make them feel good it they're just normal kids who just happen to have autism yeah I love I knew I, I wasn't trying to criticize you it was just I was right. thinking maybe like that let's not call anybody anything it's got to just right. be very PC yeah, these days. yeah <laughs> because there are some people especially the uh, people who are you know have gone through cancer or are going through it, the, the, the treatments, they're very sensitive. And a lot of people don't want to go into a yoga studio because they don't want to be, um, you know, everyone is very sensitive to that person. Like they want to make sure they don't get hurt or we're so, we're so sensitive. And, and so having this type of, you know, specialized uh, yoga class for them, it makes them feel really good because it's not just for people who are going through it right now. It's for survivors like me. If I feel like doing it, it's you're getting a good, um, you're getting a good flow. You're getting a good class. You're getting all the benefits. And, it, and it's supposed to benefit all the side effects that comes with cancer treatment. Yeah. You know, I remember when I used to volunteer at a, a, a a center where people were getting their infusions, they always had yoga classes, Reiki, they had all those modalities, which why wait until you get cancer, just do them every day anyway. Yes, yes. And, and that's the thing, it's, unfortunately, we hear so much of people making that change only when something really bad happens in their life. And so, you know, we try to share to, you know, with everyone that we can is why wait? You know, why wait until something bad happens Because that's to usually you? how it happens. It yeah. is. You, you, a lot of people wait until something happens in order to make a change. Yeah, and so this way you're preventing and, uh, and you don't have to, you don't have to worry about, you know, because especially when you are in that stage, I would not, when I was in the hospital, when I just came out, there's no way I would have been able to do the things that I can do now. And it was by accident, but of course there are no accidents that I got into yoga. I didn't get out of uh, treatment and think, oh, I need to uh, do yoga because I know it's going to help me. I used to make fun of yoga before I had it. I was like, oh, I'm a Pilates girl. You know, you sit in your room with your eyes closed. I had this image of what yoga was, just like people have an image of what veganism is. And so I, you know, I had that image in my mind and I never wanted to try it. And then I walked into this space and it happened to be a 200 hour teacher training. And I couldn't bend my knees. I couldn't walk. I couldn't do anything. And then I got into it and, and it changed me. It made, it just felt like there was a ton of bricks lifted from my shoulders and I could, I just felt so much better mentally, physically, every, in every way. You know, I remember listening to a podcast with you and you didn't really sign up to be a yoga teacher. You were just meeting somebody. Yes, yes, yes. And I, um, I, you know, she was, she happened to be a yoga teacher and I didn't know that she was just someone who had no, her family members had gone through cancer and lost their lives. So she was reaching out to me just because we had mutual friends and she said, Hey, I'm here. I know what you're going through. If you need anything, let me know. And for all those months, I didn't respond to her because I didn't know who she was. You know, I was, I, it was nice, but I was in such a dark, sad place being in the hospital. I didn't want regular people that I knew to come over to visit, let alone someone I didn't know. 
And she just kept sending you messages, sending you love, sending you love, you know, have a good day. And then afterwards, I thought, gosh, this lady was so nice. I'm going to just invite her to, you know, meet for tea or juice. So we got a ride the day and the time that I chose. After six months of her trying to meet with me, the day and the time that I chose to meet her was the day she was starting a 200-hour teacher training. And she cried as soon as I walked into that door. And I, I thought, oh my gosh, I came at the wrong time place. I'm so sorry. She goes, no. She's like, this is, this is meant to be. Like, I wasn't trying to like convert. You didn't even know what I did for a living. But I was just trying to connect to you. And this is the day and the time that you thought you needed to meet me. And everyone there who had been do, doing yoga for years, healthy, they welcomed me. They didn't, they looked past my baldness and no judgment. And, um, and I was like, I've never even taken a yoga class in my life when I was healthy. I am two weeks fresh from chemo. I can barely walk. I need help. I can't sit. I can't stand. And I've never taken a class. And you want me to go into a training? And they all just said, it's all right. Just take this book. Do what you can. We'll give you props. And it was three months almost of training. And almost every class I was crying and trying to not go. I was making every excuse. But today, and everyone's like, just get up. We're going to go. And he was by my side. And I got stronger and stronger. And it was about almost two months into it that I was able to walk on my own, um, do the poses. And then it was like two and a half months that I, I understood what it was all about. And then it was at the end that I took a deep breath and it felt like the first breath I took since I was diagnosed. Wow. And it changed everything. Those days that I was crying and scared, I didn't have those feelings anymore because of the tools that yoga gives you, those poses, the meditation, the breathing exercises, it, it changed my life. So I'm very, very, it just, everything happens for a reason. Are you still in touch with the lady? I am, I am, and she's amazing. Oh yeah, I, I'm in touch with every, almost all of the people that I, you know, had uh, from the hospital, for the teachers, the people in my class that I trained with. And, um, you know, she just knew, she said, when you walk in that door, and I just knew that this was going to change your world. And it definitely did. It really did change mine. It changed to Bay's. I mean, he saw, he was watching me literally transition, you know, like imagine an infant, you know, kind of just crawling and then walking. It was, that was me. And that's when he said, mom, I want to be a yoga teacher so I can help people heal the way yoga helped you. And I was like, that's so cute. You know, he's telling me what he wants to be when he grows up. And he said, no, I want to do this now. And then we just started going and getting certificates together. And then that's how he became the youngest yoga teacher um, in, in America because he, um, he didn't know. It wasn't that he was like, oh, I'm six year old. I want to be the youngest. He didn't know what he was. Um, going to be. He just thought that my mom had cancer. Look at what yoga did to her. And how about all the people in the hospital that were next to my mom that don't know about yoga like she did? I want to bring that to them. And uh, because so many people come to us and say, oh, but I can't, uh, I can't, I'm not flexible. Or I, you know, I, I, I'm sore. I'm this. And they're like, just look at my mom. She could not walk or bend her knees. The easiest pose that they say is easy. Couldn't do it. And look at what she became. And then it makes, it inspires people to do the same thing. Great. Well, yeah. you're going to make a recipe for us today, yeah. aren't you? Thank goodness I have everything the way I have because I took up so much of the time talking. Um, today I'm making one of today's favorite dishes. It's lubia polo. Lubia is bean, so it translates to bean rice. And I'm going to um, show you what the dish looks like. And then I'm going to break it down. So they will bring it up to the camera and show. So this is lubia polo. And this is teddy, which is the crispy part of the rice. Do you see that? Oh, my God. And this is an oil-free recipe, you guys. So I have tons of Persians writing to me and to Tabe saying, oh, you can't make teddy without oil. You can't have it. It won't taste as good. And you see it right here. I did it. And so... Um, I'm going to, um, okay, so that is the rice. And the ingredients that I use for that is, I use green beans. Tibi, can you bring that up here, sweetheart? And just maybe zoom in. Okay, so I use the green beans. And what I do, and I also use potatoes. And so I cut the potatoes and the green beans. 
And you don't have to use potatoes, you don't have to use garlic, or you can. Um, these are the, this is what I put into ours. And then this is, um, wait, and then I'm going, and then I use our meat. And the meat that we use, we make ourselves. This is our meat. Well, it's not yet, but it's walnuts. These are the ingredients. The ingredients. So it's walnuts and mushrooms. If I didn't have mushrooms, I would just use the walnuts and it would be just as good. If I had cauliflower, I would add that too. This is the meat um, that I put in the food processor. And then, so you see it with that ground meat texture. This is the walnuts and the mushroom in the food processor. Uh, and we cooked it with the spices. Yeah. Well, actually, no, we, we cook this and we use this meat for any Everything. dish that has meat. That's our meat replacement. And then we have onion and garlic. I just chopped it. And then we have basmati rice, which I have rinsed and soaked. And you can, in this process, while you're soaking it, the longer you soak it, the better. I mean, the few hours, which I've done, you put some salt in it if you want. Um, but we don't really cook too much with salt. If we do, maybe a teaspoon here and there, but we don't need it. We're, we're very, uh, we're used to not having it so much, so. And then we use tomato sauce and a little bit of water, which is right here. And then also, if you want, um, because I didn't really measure everything today, did I can send it to you afterwards so you have the approximate measurements that I use. And then we, um, so what we did, and I'll show you. So this is our broth that we make homemade. And the way I do it is um, all the onions, garlic, green bean stems, um, potato, um, the, the skin of the potato, tomatoes. We make our scrap bag, which is that. So we don't put anything in trash. We save all of our scraps from all the vegetables. And this is how we make broth. We put that in a pot with, um, we cover it with water, put some, you know, turmeric, oregano, um, <laughs> rosemary, pepper, whatever you like in there. And then we um, bring it to a boil and then we simmer it for about an hour. And then this, it becomes this beautiful, really flavorful uh, broth. So much better um, than buying it in a box at the store. But of course you can do that. And if we're not going to make broth right away, we'll put it in a bag and put it in the freezer. And then just take it out whenever we want to make our broth. But we don't and, waste anything. And this way we don't waste anything and we, we save money. Instead of buying it, we make it ourselves with the things we were going to throw away. So I received an email from Chandra saying that she's not oh, able to have any that. kind of vinegar. Sorry about that, something started playing. Oh, I thought there was a delay. I was like, I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> and um, yeah, and also they, they put so many unnecessary ingredients in store-bought everything. And so we just try to do everything ourselves and it tastes a lot better. And we know that it's going to be um, as healthy as we want it to be. So this is our broth. And then uh, the reason I have the water here is just to show you guys when I'm making the rice with the tariq, which I'm gonna show you guys, I'm gonna do a little bit of step-by-step. -step. Um, to make the tariq, instead of using oil on the bottom of the uh, pot, I put a little bit of our broth and a little bit of water, and that's it. And this is all of them that I've already sauteed, and it looks like it's been uh, you know, mixed up with some oil, right? It's just our broth. That is just from our broth. And the spices. And the spices, of course, but I mean no oil. And then... So it's the onion and garlic and the green beans and potato. And then, of course, we have the meat that we did. And the potatoes take a bit longer to cook. Yeah, that and the green beans, the potato the longest. That's why I cook those together. And then afterwards, we add our tomato sauce and water. And we mix and everything. And all of it. This yeah. is a mix, yeah. all of it. The meat, the tomato sauce, green beans, potatoes, onions, so and garlic. That's everything in there. Wow. Uh, every component looks delicious. Yeah. It's this really one is so good you could eat with a spoon. Yeah, you could eat that with a spoon. So what I have here, which I should have turned on before, but I didn't, is we're going to just bring this um, pot of water to a boil. Once that boils, then I'm going to take um, the rice that I have soaked. I'm going to take the, can you see? Yeah, you can see, right? The water out just, it, it, it is okay if there's going to be a little bit in there. It's not a big deal. Oh, there was a little piece of uh, green bean in there. Uh, that's enough. 
I'm going to then I'm going to once that boils, I'm going to put the rice in there, and I'm going to put it on medium to medium low for about four to five minutes. We don't want it to boil. We want it to just be kind of like half cooked, right? We want there to still be able to have that little bite in it. We don't want it to be soft, otherwise it'll become mush. Once that is done, I'm going to. Um, I'm going to put that through um, my colander, and then we are going to mix the rice in a bowl, which I have here. I'm going to put the rice that we that we put over the stove for four or five minutes. We're going to put it in here. We're going to mix it with our sauce, which is everything that we saute, and um, and then we're going. the The longest part is just waiting for about 45 minutes for the rice to cook. We put it back in the pot, and with, and I'm going to show you guys all this. I'm just telling you this while that is, uh, you know, while that comes to a boil. I'm going to put a little bit of water and broth in the bottom of my pot, and then I'm going to put the rice and um, and mixture together in it, and I'm going to cover it with a lid. And then today does a great job. We have something from Iran, but it's actually at our cabin. It's not here. We cover the lid with a towel. We get it a little bit damp. And that way it traps that steam in it. So we're gonna cover the rice for uh, 45 minutes on low heat. After 45 minutes, there's a test that we do. You lick your finger. It's called the traditional tidy test. The traditional tidy test. Well, after 45 minutes on low, you wanna bring it up, up, up a little bit, like every two minutes. How did he do the last one? Did he do like two, two minutes, minutes two, three, two, three times? Two, two, two. Two and then two. Oh, wow, that's a lot of twos. Okay, so about five to, if I would say about five to six minutes. You want to just keep on bringing the heat up. It depends on how much rice you're cooking. And in order to tell if it's ready, you lick your finger and then you touch the, the what I do, pot. And then you'll hear it go tss. I get a bit of water from the bottom of the, the faucet and then I tap it. You have to do it fast. You don't want to hold your finger on it. Well, of course, it. Not. Just it won't do burn. Do it like that. You feel it sizzle a little bit, the water, and you, uh, that's how you know when that's it's ready. You know it makes a little ready. sound too. And then you can shake it a little bit too and you'll tell. And the way we have it like this, how you can see it. We're going to show you the secret is, to flipping um, a perfect patty. Well, I don't know. We won't be able to do all of that if I have it ready, but I'll, I'll show them. So we'll get a plate and... Yeah, so let's say the rice is done after the 45, 46 minutes. You'll put a plate over the pot that you have the rice in. You see that? And then you hold your hand on the bottom and you flip it. And if the tadik is ready, it will come out the way it did. If that it's is not, so cool. And if not, you'll try to put it back in as much as possible and then just cook it for a couple more minutes. And sometimes it gets stuck on the bottom. It just depends if you have the right amount of, of your broth in the water. And also if you, it, just to make sure you don't put it on um, too high of heat, because that will burn it and then it won't flip. But it'll still be good because you can use a wooden spoon or a spatula and get it from the bottom. This is just looks pretty, but you can pour it out and then break the teddy from the bottom and put pieces on there. So, um, it's, it's really easy. I'm going to, oh, the spices that I have here are, um, let's see, I've got if, salt, optional if you like, um, oregano, garlic powder, onion powder, a little bit of black pepper, um, cinnamon, and turmeric. There is not a dish I think that we make that doesn't use turmeric, especially with Persian food. And, uh, Okay, so here the water has come to a boil, so I'm going to lower the heat. I'm going to put the, um, the rice in there. And then also what I do, I'm going to come over next to it. Okay, so what I do is when I'm pouring the rice in here, just to get all of it out, I take some water from the pot, and then all of it is there, okay? And then I take some of the water from the top, and I leave it out. That way, if when I'm putting this to the colander, if there's any stuck in there, we use that hot water to get it out. We're not using cold water from the sink. So this is gonna be on here. I'm gonna do it for uh, 
four minutes and we'll check it. While that's happening, let me just show you guys real quick with some of the, the um, potatoes that I have, for example. Or, um, yeah, so this is what I do first. So I pour. Let me keep the computer here. Can you hold up? I'm going to put a little bit of my broth. You, you won't be able to. Can you lift it up, honey? Because I want them to see what I'm pouring and how much. So I'm just going to put a little bit on the bottom. And then um, I don't put my vegetables and then my spices. I always put my spices first. I'll put a little tiny bit of salt. So, Hell, we have a question from someone asking, are there any vegetables that you wouldn't recommend using for making veggie broth that might be too overpowering? Oh, yes. Oh, gosh, what was it we did one time? Um, yeah, I put beet in, and it wasn't. I mean, it was fine. Actually, no, the beet. It, it just gave it, it. The beet gave it a good color. I didn't affect the flavor. We put something in there. Was, I think it was the beet. Maybe we put too much of it. I think it was the beet. You could literally you could put everything. Um, we put the insides of a tomato. We put the um, whatever. We, just anything we don't use, we make it into broth. Yeah. So, okay, so you see I've got my spices in here, so I'll just get that in with the broth. And also, what I do know is, um, I'm going to put, I'll just put the onions and garlic in here. And then uh, if I want to make like a really golden, you know, grilled onions, I'll wait till it's almost stuck to the bottom of the pan before I put a little bit more uh, broth because if you put too much, it will get soft like you want, but you won't have that beautiful golden color if you put too much. And, um, and it, it's really nice because what happens is if it starts to uh, stick to the, the pan and then you pour a little bit, then you can kind of scrape it off and then it mixes with the onions and it turns beautiful golden color. And here you can add, of course, more of whatever um, uh, of the spices that you want. But this is how I did it. This is all I did. So I just put a little bit of broth. You do not need oil for any of this. And just add more broth. And if you don't have broth, you can add water. If I don't have broth, which we, we I think, have all, almost always had it, you can just add a little bit of water and it's fine. Um, now you see how the rice here, it's just kind of just a little bit coming to a simmer right here. You can just move it a little bit. Very gently. Very gently. And that's so it. This is going to be perfect because it's a smaller pot. Normally we do a lot if we have family over. And, um, but what I do recommend if you're making a broth, so if you're, when we're making uh, pho soup, for the broth that we made, that was another thing I was going to make today, but I went with this because today was like, I want this rice. Um, the best kind of broth for that, because you're having so many other um, spices that make it strong and flavorful, I would do carrot, celery, and onion, and garlic. That's it. You can use, um, you know, your other um, broth that's from the scraps that you make, which is good for everything else. If it's good for, you know, cooking, um, if you're using it to saute, you can use all of it. There's even the beet, you can't go wrong. The only thing that was made it taste a little bit different was with that beet was because it was too flavorful and it was a different flavor. It wasn't like a, a simple vegetable based broth, which is what you need. Um, here, can you show right now? This is it. This is our rice. Um, so yeah, if you're making it for like a base for a, uh, a soup, I would just do the basic onion, garlic, carrot, celery. So here, in it goes. But you see there's some rice left in there. So I'm gonna use that water that I put aside and it's hot still. Okay, now this is the part. Where, can I put it right here? Can you see it? Oops. Turn this off. Lower this. So I don't forget about it. And my broth is right here. <laughs> okay, so here, this is where you should show them how much I put. You want to cover the bottom of the pan, the pot. 
Now there's no, it's always different because it just depends on the heat of your stove, your, on your range. So do you see how I have it covered? And then I'm gonna put a little bit of water too. Because we, it, it's going to absorb in the rice. So all of this is gonna go away like it did um, with that rice. So now I'm gonna get this bowl and I'm gonna mix my rice and all the veggies and sauce. And like my mom and my family back in Iran, the way they do it is they put a layer of each in the in the pot. Can you put it down this way? Yeah. Um, they they put it uh, in the pot and they layer it like that. But I like to just mix it. It's really easy here. And you can mix as much or as little as you want. It becomes as beautiful. Oh. Um, Linda wanted to know what brand and type of cookware are you using? What is this? Uh, I think, is it Green Chef? Green Chef? Can you check? The, the, the cookware, the, the pots and pans. Green pan. Green pan. Uh, VG says, can you please come back again and do pho? Teach us how oh, to do um, so or pho. So it was, today it was going to be between this and spring rolls and pho. So next time, maybe together, yeah. <laughs> we're not too far from each other yeah we can do um we can do five spring rolls and that is my absolute favorite is it okay. your favorite it's my favorite so you see the color it looks like spanish rice right now but with a lot of different things in there so now i'm going to just put them um i'm going to put it in the pot i'm going to spoon it in there Can you, can you lift it up so they can see how much uh, liquid there is in there? Yeah. And what kind of rice are you using, people are asking? Uh, basmati. Organic basmati rice. Love basmati. The smell of basmati is so it, wonderful. Good. And, uh, and this is it. If the rice is a bit dry, Sometimes what we'll do is um, we will put little holes, we'll poke little holes in here like this in the rice. And then we will put um, a little bit more of the broth, but it's actually perfect, I think. Okay, so that's it. That's, that's how you make the rice, you guys. You just put it in here. I'm going to use this lid that I have with the towel, cover it. Put it on low heat for, you can do 35 to 45 minutes. I'm just gonna suggest 45 minutes. And that's it. And then you're gonna put it on higher heat, higher heat, higher heat until you hear that sizzle. And um, for maybe like two or three times. Also, if you want that step that you see here where the rice is mixed in the bowl, we like to make everything fresh. And um, this is pretty much the hardest part, prepping everything and cooking it all. We put this in a container in the fridge. And then when we want to make it, we just put however much we want in the pot and then we cook it. Instead of, because right now, if we, um, uh, my, my mom will be here later and, um, and we'll be going to Orange County tomorrow. So you know, we'll, it'll be fine. But what we'll do is um, if we keep it, if we make it like this, then you'll just have to reheat it, you know, and then this way it's, it's ready to go. It's pre-made, right? Pre-mixed. Of course, the rice is not cooked all the way. And then um is going to show you guys something. What? Oh, okay. Yeah. And then that's it. And then you just can use it and just store it and have it ready to go whenever you're wanting it. And that means every time you make it, you'll get fresh tatty. That's great. Their tandig is so good. And the last thing I wanted to show you guys is with this dish, um, something that goes really well with it is um, a um, uh, pickled vegetables. I don't know if you've ever had that with Persian food. 
And, you know, it doesn't taste great with warm and sabzi, but there are some foods that it does taste great with. And it's called torshi. It's called torshi. So it's pickled vegetable. This oh. one is eggplant, carrot. Oh my God, I've had that at a Middle Eastern restaurant. That is delicious. Yeah, it's really good. And then also... Um, torshi means sour. Yeah, torshi means sour. So... Then I have this, it's called solid shirazi. It's just tomato, cucumber, and onion. And we mix it together. So I've already cut it. Can you put the um, tomatoes and stuff? We made uh, cookies earlier, and now he's eating it. He's trying to do the cameraman as he's doing that. Uh, okay, so you, we've got the cucumber, tomato, and, and onion. And you just want to mix it together. It's really simple, really delicious side salad with this rice. And um, and sometimes you, people put olive oil and lemon juice. Uh, I've never done that, even before Cream. I was oil free. I just put lemon juice, so we have fresh squeezed lemon. Just pour it in there, mix it, and if you want a little bit of salt, you can add a little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Uh, and it is a really, it's just a perfect um, salad to go with this rice. Yummy. So what, what was the eggplant thing you showed? Um, it's, just, it's just a pickled vegetable, a pickled eggplant. That and, sounds delicious. Yeah. And um, you can make it at home. You can do cauliflower, carrots, mm -hmm. eggplant. They, yeah, you can get it from a Persian market in, in jars. They have different ones. Yeah. They've got... Um, oh, we were, we were at the... Uh, the local Persian market in Orange County, and we got the there was creamy eggplant, and there's garden vegetables. There's so many different kinds of uh, torshi. And wow. there's a really good thing that actually this is my favorite to go with the with the lubia pole. It's called khiarshar. It's a uh, it's a pickles. it's a pickle <laughs> a pickle that uh, it goes really good with this Persian food. Yeah, Persian food is so delicious. I, 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 maybe you guys will write a Persian cookbook. Yeah, well, we're writing a, a cookbook, and there's going to be Persian dishes in it, but uh, it's not going to be all Persian. It's going to be a little everything. bit of everything, breakfast foods, lunch, Persian, Italian, Mexican food, and um, and, that's, and that's all. And then um, if you guys, I will cut this so you guys can see. Oh, Diane says she's never had Persian food. Well, Diane, you've got to try it. You're in for a real treat. Yeah, it's really good. And I got to tell you, so there's so many things that basically you learned today with the rice. So with any rice dish that you're making, that's how you do it. You, you, you know, you rinse and soak the rice and then you put it in the boiling water for about five minutes and then you drain it. That's the base. Then if you want, you put it back in it just plain, cover it, and you just have beautiful Persian white basmati rice. Or you can get really creative and just use any kind of vegetable that you want, any mixture and mix it in, or just have it again, the plain rice with whatever you, whatever side you like. If you want to make a vegan kebab or um, there's, there's this, you can just go on and on. But anyway, so that is the base. That is the, the, um, the rice that you make. And then this, is our rice. Brandy, can you grab that laptop? And here's the teddy. Yeah, see here. Yum. Oh my gosh. It's really so good. good. Isn't that beautiful? Oh my it's like it's like a holiday presentation. Yeah. It's it, one uh time is for my what was it? My 13th birthday, uh, my mom was asking me what kind of cake I want. She said, I want a tidy cake. That's all you wanted. That, well, you could look, it looks like, it look, does look like a cake. It was rice with potato tidy. Mm, it's really good. You gotta try this. And so, here you go. Lugia polo, Persian rice. Mishijan. 
Wow. In Farsi, instead of saying bon appetit, we say Nishi John. It means pleasure to your soul. Well, that definitely would be pleasure to my soul, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> um, Joy, Joyce wants to know, can you use broccoli in broth and stems of things like collars or kale, or would that be too clear? Yeah, you can everything. use cilantro, uh, chives, dill, um, um, onion. We put, what uh, else? Uh, uh, cauliflower. What is it we put in our mouth soup? Dandelion Dandelion. Yeah, we, we put everything. There's not one vegetable that we waste. We put everything in our scrap bag. Yeah. Any other questions? <laughs> oh, I'm just there asking for your website. And I said, just, they have to look underneath the video because it's in the show notes and I put your Instagram links as well. Oh, here's a question. Actually, Diane said, can you freeze it? What, yeah, uh, that's what we do. Yeah. We, the, the broth or the luvia polo? Maybe no, both. The scrap. Uh, the scrap, we always freeze it. We put it in the, in the resealable bag. Can we freeze it? This is what's in the freezer. We have green onions in there, mushroom, bell pepper, red yeah. onion, I'll put it in there. We put the, uh, we put the stems and the inside the bell pepper. Uh, Everything, wherever we can yeah. get our hands on. Ginger skins, that might have been what it was that made it too strong. Oh yes. It was ginger beautiful. skin. Oh, you're right, David. That's fantastic. Do you, yeah. do you sell people? Somebody's asking, do you sell that apron on your website? I do, yes. yeah. Yeah. Um, and this is his um, his mantra. So I don't know if you've ever seen his classes, his cooking. Well, stuff. yeah, I keep, I've, every podcast I've listened to, and even this show, when, when you're ready to say goodbye, we're going to close with it. Yes. yes. The, yeah, good thoughts. Really yeah. And then this is what he says. And we have two or three different versions of this. And um, also, he has yoga mat. Your yoga mat to show. We have his Tibet mat. And it's all on tobayatkins.com. That is so cool. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Definitely come back. Yeah. Every oh. Sorry, I mispronounced it. It's spelled P H O, but it's pronounced Fa. Fa. Yeah. yeah. I know for the longest time I would say Fo, and I didn't understand like it's P H O, but it's Fa. That's right. And it sounds like it could be F-A-U-X foe. Well, this is great. And, and guys, we can't really give the recipe because we don't have room in the show notes. Plus, you just really have to watch the video because it's, it's yeah. that's how Persian food is done. It's it, Our measurement is called enka. In Farsi, much. it means when we're teaching how to cook, you say how much? Enka. It means this much. Yeah. But we do have this recipe, an older version, when we use oil so you can eliminate it on the website. And it also, it also used... Uh, uh, it was when we were using oil and like uh, not, not homemade meat. meat. The package. It was a packaged vegan meat. So it's easy to just modify the ingredients and the way you do it, just use the broth instead of the oil, use the cauliflower or the mushroom walnut meat instead of the store-bought ones. Yeah, but it's and, on the website. If you yes. uh, subscribe to this, there's 150 plus videos um, of cooking recipes as well as yoga. And every week we try to upload a new video. That's incredible. You guys are doing just wonderful things. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for having us. Yes, it was thank so you. Fun. Oh Next my God. I'm, I'm so glad I got a copy of that yoga magazine because that's how I first found out about today. It was on the oh, cover. Wow. And I'm like, whoa. And I, yeah, that is amazing. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. God, you. Making, making me hungry. Uh, Jesse says, Chef AJ, I love this family. So, uh, yeah, why wouldn't you? Amazing. Oh, here's one. Follow Tibet on his Instagram. is Tibet Atkins, and he right. posts videos of everything. And I'm going to put that, I'm going to put that in the show notes as well. Another, we got a lot of broth questions um, about onion skins. Can you put the skin from the onion in the freezer bag? That's, that's all we, of it. It all goes in the freezer uh, bag. We just scrub the onions before we take the skin off. The same with garlic, and we put it in here, put it in our bag, and freeze it. And it is great. Yeah, we scrub everything before because normally you don't want, you don't, people don't clean the Yeah, you don't wash the stuff you're going to throw away, but we don't throw but it away. But we scrub it, we clean it, and then that way we know it's clean and ready to go in our bag to use. And the broth tastes great. It's really yes. simple. And it's environmentally friendly. You have no packaging and it's free. Yeah. Exactly. Who doesn't exactly. love that? Yeah, really. I love it. And, and speaking of free, you guys often or always maybe even give yoga if, if people can't afford it. Is that correct? When they come to your in-person classes? No, no, when, no, when, when we had our studio, of course, we've never turned anyone away. If there was a family who wanted kids to come. Um, since I became a yoga teacher back in 2012 until present and forever, anyone who's had cancer, I've never charged them. 
that was kind of my, you know, way of giving back and sharing that to people who are in the same position I was in. And I've been donating all the money I've made for the past five over years. five plus years to people who have cancer. Wow, that that's incredible. Yeah, he's given a hundred percent of all of his proceeds. Wow. Yeah. Just when we thought we couldn't love you anymore. You, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that is amazing. Well, thank you guys so much. This is a beautiful you. presentation. Yeah, I, and I'd like to just close with my mantra. Bring your hands together to your forehead and repeat after me. Think good thoughts. Think good thoughts. Lower to your mouth. Speak kind words. Speak, Speak kind words. Lower to your heart. Feel love. Feel love. Feel love. Be love. Be love. Be love. And give love. And give love. And give love. And that's Namaste. what you cer certainly Namaste do. Vegan. Yeah, namaste vegan. <laughs> namaste. Yes, I love it. Namaste. Stay vegan. And if you're not already vegan, namaste. Go vegan. Yes. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you so much. And thanks all of you for watching another episode of Chef AJ Live. Please come back tomorrow when I have two live shows, 11 a.m. Pacific time. We have Matt Bennett from Raw Intuition. He's going to be making his five-star salad with cowboy sauce and smokehouse dressing. And at 2 p.m., we have Talia Furman, the daughter of Dr. Joel Furman, who has a new book called Desserts to Live For, All Without Sugar, Oil, and Salt. And she's going to be making goji berry brownies. But you guys have to go enjoy your tadid now. <laughs> yes. Take Thank care. You. Bye bye.